Welcome back to A Moment in Crime. This is our ninth episode. When we began this series, it was to dig back into the Leader Post archives and look back at some of the biggest crime stories uh, that this province has seen. And I think what is easily one of the biggest is now 50 years old. It began on January 31st, 1969, and it's easily one of the craziest page turners in Saskatchewan crime annals. We have a, a poor woman found dead in a snowbank, a young man who goes to prison proclaiming his innocence. We have key witnesses who recant their evidence, DNA testing that doesn't match, and finally, the real killer going to prison. If you're fans of Netflix shows like Making of a Murderer, The Staircase, An Innocent Man, this is Saskatchewan's version. This story begins on January 31st, 1969 in Saskatoon. Early that frigid morning, Gail Miller heads out to catch a bus. She's found later by school children dead in the snow. She had been raped and she'd suffered 27 slash or puncture wounds. A trail of stolen items from Gail's purse leads police to a house about a block away and it eventually leads to David Milgard. Milgard, then 16 years old, had come from Regina to Saskatoon that night with friends and ended up at the house of Shorty Catrain. Initially, a man from that house told police Milgard had been acting oddly that night and may have even had blood on his clothes. But Milgard's companions told police he had an alibi. They were with him all night and he hadn't done anything. However, months later, under questioning by another police officer, the teens eventually changed their stories and they implicated Milgard, even saying he reenacted the crime and one witness said she'd actually seen him commit it. On January 31st, 1970, exactly a year after Miller's murder, Milgard ended up going to prison for life. On the advice of his lawyer, Milgard never testified and was largely convicted on these very incriminating statements from his companions. There were a series of appeals, but without any success, and Milgard remained in prison. His mother, Joyce Milgard, became his greatest advocate and began lobbying almost immediately for her son that she believed was innocent. 1990 was a key year in her efforts. That was the year that some of those witnesses who had testified so long ago against her son actually started to recant their testimony. A new name also surfaced at that time of a violent man who had lived only a block away from where this murder had occurred. That man was Larry Fisher. He and his wife, Linda, had lived in a rental suite in a house at 334 Avenue O South. That happened to be the Cadrain house, the very same house that Milgard and his companions had been at that night. So who was Larry Fisher? 
In mid-December 1968 in Saskatoon, police had issued a warning letting people know that there was a rapist who was pulling women into alleyways and raping them, some of them at, night, at knife point. But the law didn't catch up to Larry Fisher really for those crimes until September of 1970. He was in Winnipeg and in the midst of raping another woman when he was arrested. He confessed not only to the rapes in Winnipeg but to those in Saskatoon. At that time, Milgard had run out of all his appeals all the way up to the Supreme Court. Fisher received a 13-year sentence. He's in prison for about nine years, gets paroled, and in 1980 is released into North Battleford. Within months, he attacks another woman and brutally rapes her. He's sentenced to a further 10 years, and that sentence is added onto his other sentence. He doesn't see uh, the light of day again outside of prison until 1994. In the meantime, Milgard is languishing in prison, still proclaiming his innocence. His mother, uh, Joyce, and joined by her lawyers, uh, David Asper and Hirsch Walsh, continue to lobby the government to reopen this case. And those efforts finally come to fruition in 1991. Then Federal Justice Minister Kim Campbell orders the Supreme Court to review the case. In April of 1992, the Supreme Court finds Milgard had a fair trial back in 1970, but all of this new evidence about Fisher could have made an, a difference to the uh, verdict in that case, and it quashes his conviction. The ball is now in the court of the Saskatchewan government, who could now retry David Milgard on the charges. Then Justice Minister Bob Mitchell says they won't uh, retry the case. They enter a stay of proceedings but Mitchell also refuses to hold an inquiry or uh, even address any compensation for Milgard. After serving 23 years in prison, Milgard is finally released in April of 1992, the same month the uh, Supreme Court brings in that decision. A month later, I met with him in Regina. He was here visiting his brother and some of his supporters, and I remember talking to David and, and him talking about how he felt like he was in a legal limbo because even though uh, his conviction has had been quashed, people didn't yet see him as an innocent man. I remember him saying to me that what he really wanted to do was make it clear to everyone that he didn't kill anyone and he was hoping for an inquiry to achieve that. In the years that followed, the media spotlight really turned towards Larry Fisher, who looked like the primary suspect in Gail Miller's case. Larry Fisher served his full sentence and didn't get out of prison until 1994 for all those sex crimes he had committed. Larry Fisher was very bitter about this media glare that he was under, and he told Star Phoenix reporter Warren Goulding in 1994 that, quote, you guys are killing me. It took another five years until July 1997 before David Milgard truly was cleared. There had been several attempts to do DNA testing, but the technology just wasn't advanced enough to get a conclusive result. Eventually, everything is shipped to a lab in England, and finally in 1997, those results come back, and the semen found on Gail Miller's clothes did not match David Milgard. At that point, uh, there was a news conference in Winnipeg and David Milgard said that it had been a struggle, those were his words, to live with all of this for all these years. I'm sure clearly an understatement. His mother Joyce was just happy that her, her, her son could get out from under what she described as a cloud. After that, the cloud shifted to Larry Fisher and within days of that announcement about the DNA testing, he was arrested for the murder of Gail Miller. Larry Fisher went on trial in Yorkton in 1999, and the star witness at that trial was DNA testing. Those results that had come back from those DNA tests showed that, very conclusively, 
it had been Larry Fisher who had killed Gail Miller. An expert said there was a 1 in 950 trillion chance that that DNA sample had come from anyone other than Larry Fisher. Larry Fisher was convicted and sentenced in January 2000 to life in prison, but that by no means was the end of this case. Uh, Larry Fisher appealed to the Court of Appeal, also to the Supreme Court. All of that was rejected. It was only once all of that was cleared that the provincial government opened a public inquiry into this matter. The inquiry that David Milgard and I had talked about back in Regina in 1992 finally got underway in Saskatoon in September of 2005 and it would be another three years before the final report was, was released. The inquiry dismissed allegations of some sort of conspiracy to put and keep David Milgard behind bars, but it did find a number of missteps had allowed that to happen. Among the possibilities and missed opportunities the inquiry felt was in 1980 when Linda Fisher, then Larry's ex-wife, had come forward to police and raised concerns that she thought her ex-husband may have killed Gail Miller. One of the other uh, criticisms in the report came upon a Calgary police officer who had interrogated and eventually got those false statements from some of the witnesses that became so key in convicting David Milgard. David Milgard never returned to Saskatoon when that Commission of Inquiry report was brought in. By then he was just moving on with his life. About a decade earlier in May 1999, the province had agreed to pay David Milgard $10 million in compensation. Coincidentally, it's about the same amount that the inquiry cost the province as well. Fisher served 15 years in prison for Gail Miller's murder. He died in a BC prison in June of 2015. Ironically, the name of the person who wasn't the killer is perhaps even more well known than the person who actually committed the crime. This case shook the very foundations of Saskatchewan's justice system. <laughs>